There has been a lot of talk on these young kids, teenagers, doing these mass killings. I don't want to get political. I don't want to get psychological. But I've heard stories where guys, they blame everything. Not everybody blames everything, but a lot of the blame goes on the video games. The violent video games. And I think if these young kids have seen it up front and center, what it feels like or visualize in reality to see someone die or see dying people or see how someone really up front get killed, maybe it would change the way they think when they get angry and they can't have their way about shooting up somebody. Maybe. My name is Eric and welcome to the craziness that lives inside my head. Now you might say, okay, because I did a podcast not too long ago about the way I felt when I was young about blowing up people and shooting up this and all that because I was young. And I'm going to continue that conversation. I really didn't grow up with this virtual reality they have today with the video games. I, my first video game, I think I had to have been about 28, 29 years old. I think it was Ping Pong. My sister had it on her TV. I think it was Atari. Then I got my first computer, 1986. I got my very first computer. I think it was 1990 when I got my very first computer game. I didn't like it. It was violent. That computer game was about shooting up people, um... And every time I shot somebody, he keeps saying I miss. And I said, how can I miss? And I'm trying to kill everybody in the bar, in the game. And I keep, keep saying I miss. I never would pass level one. But I want to say this. I did experience in real life, up front and center, of a friend who committed suicide. And I just want to talk about that a little bit right now. Because of that, I got sober. I got clean and dry after this incident, seeing this friend kill himself. It started, it was in the 80s, early 80s, had to be 81, 82, it started. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, it was 83. I got sober in 84, so it was 83. The winter of 83. As usual, I was at my friend um, Robert's house. He had an apartment on the upper, upper West Side in Manhattan. He lived on the second floor, a one bedroom. And we was up there, him and his lover, at the time he had a lover. His lover's name was Rick. It was Rick, Robert and I, sitting around the kitchen, around the table, snorting coke, they were snorting cocaine sniffing cocaine, the well, same thing, snorting, sniffing, um, smoking angel dust, and rum and coke. I love rum and coke. I love to drink, and I love angel dust, because I, I, I was the type of person who liked to be crazy, out of my mind. That was the kind of high I like, and angel dust is that kind of, you know, I stole a little cocaine, but it was angel dust. Anyway, they got into a big argument. I don't know what the argument about, but I'm quite sure it has something to do with the both of them. You know how it is gay men flirting and fooling around with other men. And I think it has something to do that was the argument about. I think they both were cheating on each other and they realize it. You know how it is when you get high. Your lips get loose and things start creeping out. So they was, they was arguing. They were really arguing. And Robert, I think Robert slapped him. 
And then I think he went after Robert. I said, come on, guys. You know me. I, I was high. You know, right? Come on, guys. Come on. I mean, I'm laughing. It was so funny. <laughs> come on, guys. Come on. Stop it. Anyway, Robert kicked him out. Robert was a small guy. I don't know how he did it. Rick was a big guy. Not big as me, but Robert actually pushed him out the door and wouldn't let him back in. He was banging on the door and screaming. And of course, the neighbors called the cops. And then, you know, Barbara still wouldn't let him in. So what happened was Rick went down to the corner, to the corner for you young people. We used to have a, a telephone booth on every other corner. Rick went down to the nearest corner to the telephone booth and dialed 911 and said there was a fire. Rick was trying to get back into the apartment. So the fire engine, next thing we know, we banging on the door with the fire engine. The fireman, I should say, not the, not the engine, but the fireman. And Rick was behind him. And Rick was saying, I got to get my stuff, I get my stuff. And the fireman got pissed off and told Rick that he could be arrested for calling a false alarm. So they let uh, Rick in, Robert let Rick in. And then Robert's yelling at Rick to get your stuff together. You're getting out. You're not staying the night. So me, I'm laughing at the whole thing. I thought it was hilarious. You know, back then we didn't have um, cell phones because I damn sure would have videotaped it. It was hilarious. The whole the whole situation with the firemen and, and Rick is behind the, the big firemen and, uh, you know, oh, can you let me back in? I mean, all this nonsense. It, it was it was hilarious. So Robert and I were in the kitchen smoking um, angel dust, drinking our rum and coke. And then we hear something pow, not like a gunshot. You know, Robert had this big uh, bookcase. Rick was drunk. And that's what it, it sounded like Rick had knocked over the bookcase. That was a very big bookcase. And that's what it sounded like, the bookcase slamming on the floor. So I said, I said, Robert. Go see uh, Rick. Rick might have hurt himself because he's so drunk. You know, he was high too. So Robert goes in the room. He starts screaming. And I go and I said, you know me. I didn't, I didn't run in the room. I took my time. They're, you know, oh, here we go again. And by the time I got in the room, Robert was on top of Rick, screaming Rick's name, Rick, Rick. And then I saw the blood come out of Rick's eyes. Blood. Red blood coming out of it, guys. And I couldn't believe it. Well, I got angry. I got angry because I knew about the gun. Robert had a gun. I, I, I was Robert's roommate for about a couple of months. And when I was his roommate, Robert used to say, Oh, I had the gun under the um I had the gun under the mattress, the bullet saw in the closet. He lived on the second floor with the fire escape. You know, he was afraid that somebody was going to kick the, the window in the fire escape and, and rob him or whatever. But I, and I said, Robert, I said, by the time I get the gun, go in the closet and put the bullets in the gun, whoever's going to kick that window in is going to kick that window in and the gun, I'll be dead. I bet, you know. So that's why I got mad. I got mad because I think what Robert did after I told him that, Robert kept the gun loaded under the mattress. And on top of that, Robert told me a story when him and Rick got together. He, you know, he showed Rick where the gun was because that was their protection. And Rick was shooting the gun on the roof. And he so told Rick, you know, he shouldn't be doing it. And I said, Rob, Robert didn't tell me that. Well, he did tell me that about a couple of weeks before all of this had happened. So Rick shot himself in the head. I freaked out. I was angry. I thought we were all going to go to jail for killing Rick. I took the gun out of Rick's hand. I threw it in the closet. And I, Rick, Robert said, what are you doing? What are you doing? We, I said, we got to get rid of the body. He only lived like three blocks from the Hudson River. I said, we got to take him to the river and throw the body in the river. Now, as, as high as we were, Robert was the only one that had any sense. Robert goes, what are you talking about? We didn't kill him. We didn't do anything. He committed suicide. Calm down. 
So, Robert put the gun back in Rick's hand and we called the cops. When the cops came, and after the cops, we couldn't go anywhere, by the way, the cops came and then the detectives. And when the detectives came, you know, the detectives got to ask a lot of questions. One detective had me inside the apartment. The other detective had Robert out in the hallway. Asked the questions, I guess, probably the same question. Well, now I know it's the same type of same questions he asked me, he asked Robert. Then they switch. Then I went out in the hallway to talk to that detective and Robert came into the, into, into the apartment to talk to his dete my detective. And that's when all hell broke out. You see, I couldn't tell the detective what hand the gun was in. Why I couldn't tell? Because I didn't pay attention to what gun, uh, the, what hand uh, the gun was in when I took the gun out of his hand and put and threw it in the closet. So Robert put the gun probably in the right hand. Because they wanted to know was he left-handed or right-handed, and no, I, you know, you know, everybody's right-handed, but on, and my in this situation, Rick was left-handed. So anyway, after they talked to both of us, which I didn't know this by the time. This is this is what I just told you is after the fact. So they went and they, the two detectives, I was in, we was in the I was in the apartment with Robert, and the detective was out in the hallway. And then one detective came in, took out his, um, what you call those, um, handcuffs, and arrested me. And I said, what? He goes, we're arresting you for killing of Rick. I said, why would I kill Rick? They said, for, for the companionship of Robert. I bust out laughing. And I said to the detective, and I'm laughing, I said, you think I'm going to kill a macho man like Rick for a freaking flaming queen like Robert? Are you out of your mind? And I couldn't believe it. I was being arrested. They did. They put me in handcuffs. The other one um, was taking me away. And I was just, I said, I can't believe this. Why would I kill him for, I said, I said why would I kill a man for that, for that queen? And then we started to go down the stairs, and then they, when they got to the car, he let me go. He said, okay, we're going to put it down as a suicide. Now, you might say to me, I, I didn't question why they did that, but, I mean, you put two and two together. I guess, I guess they couldn't tell who killed, who killed Rick between the two of us. So I guess they played a game, and that wasn't... I mean, I wasn't killing Rick. I, I got to, uh, not for Robert. I mean, I might kill Robert for Rick. I wouldn't kill Rick for Robert. They had it backwards. If I, if that queen, I'll, I'll push that queen off the roof if I if Rick was gonna be my boyfriend. They had it off the, they had it backwards. So, when I started, after seeing that scene, I kept having nightmares. Nightmares. I went to work, Robert and I used to work together. I went to work. Um, I don't know how Robert did. No, Robert didn't stay there in a hot pot, but it took him 24 hours before they came and got the, moved the body. Rick was in that house, in that room for 24 hours. So, um, but if I was at work and I told people at work, you know, it's supposed to be a big secret. But anyway, um, I couldn't sleep. I used to have nightmares. I used to have nightmares. I used to wake up in what they call a cold sweat. The whole scene, the eyes, the blood dripping out of the eyes, the eyes like oh, back in the oh, it was it, it was horrifying. What what it did was it made me drink more. I had to stay stone out of my mind not to have the nightmares. If I were to get sober, like you said, go to sober uh, work, you know, you sober up in the, in, in, for the night before, and you go to work and you're sober, it didn't work. It, it, I mean, e even when I did that, I mean, I, at work, and I'm not drinking. I so so I was. That's when I started drinking at work. I would get up in the morning. I'll have a a a, a pint of uh, I, wild Irish rose, 
drown in white wild Irish rose, get on the train. Just before I get into the building, I have another wild Irish rose. Lunch, I have a wild Irish rose. To get back on the train to go 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 to go home, I'll have a wild Irish rose. When I get there, when I get home, I have a half gallon of vodka and orange juice. And somebody said, you couldn't drink a half gallon. Yes, I did. From, from I get home at 6 o'clock and, and, and I'm drinking to 12 midnight, yes, I can drink a half gallon of, of, of um, liquor. Ask my sisters. They say, they say you, don't, you don't sip your drinks. You guzzle. Yes, I'm a guzzler. Anyway, that's my little story on, as I started about, in my opinion, if these kids today were to experience up front and center what it sees and feel like to kill somebody, to see it, to smell it, and to actually hold it in their arms, I don't think they would be so quick to want to kill innocent people that they don't know anything about. But that's, I'm just saying that's me. And like I said in one of my other podcasts, when you're so angry, how many times some people be so angry they want to kill you? And you don't think. You're blind with anger. You heard that? Usually, isn't it something when, when, when two lovers have, which was the situation with Robert and, and Rick, two lovers and one get mad and they shoot the other, the other one? I heard so many stories back then and maybe once in a while now how a guy would kill his girlfriend because if, she, if he couldn't have her, no man could have her. Anyway, my name is Eric, and thank you for listening to the craziness that lives inside my head. I can't